When will you play Near Replicant? What the fuck is Near Replicant? There's not a new Near game, is there? If there was, I would have heard about it, because they'd have a big butt in it. I would have seen porn of it. Remake of the prequel? Oh, who the f cares? All people want is more big ass. Oh, by the oh, speaking of hot media takes, I actually don't know if I think that it's a good game. Near Automata. I think it's a novel and interesting game, but I've been watching a full playthrough recently, which I've spent like 25 hours watching on my other monitor while playing games. And I I actually I actually think it might actually be quite a bad game. With, with really interesting things that people remember, uh, but but a bad game all the same, you know? Too much story? No, it's that the gameplay isn't fun. Like, the, the hardest difficulty setting is the worst kind of high difficulty, which is one hit kill. Fuck that, that's a bad difficulty setting. So, anything below that is way too easy and like brain dead. This is kind of a part of the whole Platinum Games Spectacle Fighter dealio, but, like, the dodge mechanic doesn't mean anything. Like, you can just spam dodge the entire game with no consequences. You don't need to time it or do it in a particular direction. You literally can just keep hitting the dodge button over and over again while your finger breaks and just get in attacks when you want. There's very little challenge unless you're playing in one-hit kill mode, which is a bullshit, unfun, and uncreative difficulty option. Motherfucker, you haven't even played it? All right. All right. All right. No, no, no. Okay, I haven't just played it. Okay? I finished it. All right, I want to hear it from you. All right? I played the fucking game. Thank you. And yeah, you can just spam the fucking dodge button. Oh, my bad. I thought you said you just watched a Let's Play. No, I'm re-experiencing it through a Let's Play. I'd watched the whole... I, I mean, I'd played the whole thing beforehand and 100% in it. Um, now, and I'll say this again, okay? Having a game with a healing system have its ultimate difficulty be one hit, one kill is just bullshit and unfun. Especially since, like, honest to God, I don't think Nier Automata has a really well-refined combat system in terms of its fidelity or reliability. It's actually quite unreliable sometimes, I think. Like, you're just fucking flipping around, dodging, spamming, and every once in a while you just get, like, hit by something, some bullshit. But leaving leaving aside the really fucking brain-dead combat, the incredibly boring, unfun, brain-dead combat, um, there are some story elements. Like, let's be real, okay? It's not that fucking deep. Like, like, let's be real. Okay, can we all- Can we all take a deep breath and admit this together? It's not that fucking deep. It's pretentious, is what it is. Pretentious, by definition, is assigning or affecting a greater degree of- of- of importance than is- than is necessary or warranted. It is, uh, and it is pretentious. It is absolutely pretentious. God, having a bunch of characters named after philosophers, fucking Engels, uh, uh, Jean-Paul, you know, Sartre, 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 however the fuck you pronounce that guy's name. And like, what is the philosophy? It takes 30 hours of story for them to finally admit to you the point that was obvious from five minutes in, which is that the machines are mimicking human behavior and also the machines are also people. Like, the, the fact that they drag you along on that for so long is insane to me. The moment you start playing Nier Automata, it's instantly clear that the machine life forms on the planet are like conscious beings. Maybe more simple than the androids, but they're clearly conscious beings with personalities. And, but it takes like 30 hours for the game to acknowledge it, you know? It's like 30 hours of the main characters being like, um, you know, like, no, they're machines, they don't have feelings, you know, they can't feel- Like, th there's so much, like, jarring juxtaposition where they will do- You can do, as to be, side quests where robots are in love with each other, where they're arguing over political differences, where they're espousing philosophy, and then a story moment will happen, and 2B will say, that's stupid, 9S, Ro machines can't have feelings. And you just finished, like, an optional quest with, like, a machine, like, 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 pouring its heart out to you, you know? Or, like, you go to a fair and you, like, fucking 
listen to the diatribes on peace and warfare and family and brotherhood. Or like after they encounter Adam and Eve who look like them and talk like them, they're still like machines can't have feelings, you know? This is the most superficial analysis. Oh, fucking cry harder. Fucking person who thinks they know philosophy because they played fucking Nier Automata. Superficial analysis. Fuck you. God, this is so bad. Ooh, they're so mad. They're so fucking mad. You can always tell you get them mad when they're steaming, but they have nothing to say. This is... He, he, he doesn't understand. He doesn't get it. This is such a superficial analysis. No, no one... No one understands it as I do. Nah, it's just... It's not that hard to understand. It's a very, very simple set of themes and, 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 and sort of plot contrivances that are just sort of... Okay, can we be real? 48% of the reason people like Nier Automata is because of Tubi's fat ass, okay? I swear to God, if the if the primary character wasn't endowed like Tubi, I legitimately feel like a lot of people are really into Nier Automata because of the jarring dissonance between the weird gameplay and themes and the fact that the main character has a ripe dumper, you know? I think that's... I really do think that's, like, the main... And I will not lie, by the way, it does make a philosophy game a little bit harder to take seriously when you can play it while looking like this. Like, listen, I want it to be totally clear. I have nothing against, literally nothing against, uh, having game protagonists have ripe, juicy... What are you doing? Artemy just sneezed four times in a row. What are you sneezing over? Witcher 3 and Nier Automata are both incredibly overrated games. I think that Witcher 3 is much more philosophically meaningful in the themes it discusses. Isn't Neon Genesis Evangelion pretentious in the same way? No, I don't think so. Well, okay, wait, why is he sneezing so much? Do you think FNAF has deeper themes than Nier? No, FNAF has essentially no themes. I, I genuinely do not think there is any thematic relevance whatsoever to... There's, there's, like, no thematic value to FNAF. There's aesthetic value, not thematic value. I do think there's a lot of aesthetic value to, uh, Nier Automata, don't get me wrong. I feel similarly about Kill a Kill. A lot of people acted like it's deeper anime than just Boob Central. It is true that, yeah, Kill a Kill really isn't that deep. I think it's really well executed for what it is, but I don't think it's that deep, you know? The, the main thing that really, really bothered me in Kill a Kill, like the, the big miss that I think, the big instance of fan service overriding, um, of, of fan service overriding the, um, the potential for a better story, is that, okay, part of Kill a Kill's story is about being ashamed of nudity. That's a big part of it. Uh, the characters all wear ridiculous fucking titty, booby, ass outfits, fucking pussy out, whatever. The, the, the Kamina suits, or whatever that they wear. Um, but the problem is, right, okay? So, that's a very Japanese theme for a story. Yeah, yeah, well, anyway, the, the problem is that, at first, the main character, Matoi Ryuko, is very embarrassed about fighting, like, basically naked. Like, that's very embarrassing for her. Um, but then, in the third episode, Kiryuin Satsuki, her rival, is like, who, who's also wearing a booby, titty ass suit, you know, is like, why the fuck would I be ashamed? I'm super strong. I'll throw my tits around. I don't fucking care. I'm super strong. I'll, if, if having my tits out makes me super strong, then I'm gonna have my fucking tits out. Basically. It's basically the speech, okay? And Ryuko internalizes this, right? And then, um, and then becomes stronger because she's less ashamed, okay? Now here's the issue, all right? Up to the third episode, the camera leers at Ryuko when she's in that suit of hers. You know, like the under ass shots, the titty shots, the whole thing. You know, hold on. Is this a full gif? I think it is. As you, as you can see, they're uh, none too subtle about it. Good anime. Just illustrating the, uh, the, the kind of camera work we're talking about here. Anyway, the, the thing that really bothered me, that sequence is in every episode, yes. The thing that really bothered me 
is that um, in after the third episode of Kill a Kill, they continue having those shots, you know? Like, so if the point is that you shouldn't be embarrassed of nudity, like, bloody blah, part of the human body, whatever, why, after that theme is introduced and compounded upon, would you then, through camera work, emphasize the, uh, the, the important, like, like, you know, the, the leering sort of gaze of, 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 you know, stuff like that. Like, why? I don't get that. It seems odd to me. Especially since later on, later on in the show... No, it's not just about that animation specifically. It's about, like, they do it over and over again. Um, especially since later on in the show, they actually have a group of, of naked characters who are naked all the time because they're nudists. And they're actually, I don't think, I don't think they're sexualized. This is what they look like. They're literally just wearing, like, am ammunition and, like, straps and stuff. But the camera actually never leers at them. Uh, the, the ones in the background, I mean. At any point, I don't think. They're actually kind of left to their own. So that's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, but they're hot, though. Well, my point is that if the nudist... If nudist colonies are about how being nude is natural, which they are, I think, you know, I, I guess most of them, then it would make sense that these guys wouldn't have the camera, like, leer at them. You know what I mean? Because it's supposed to be natural, and it doesn't. But then it does with Ryuko, so... Anyway, they're all just the same two people copy and pasted. It, it's, it's part of a running theme in the show. Mr. Good Socks, I think you missed the whole point of Nier. The robots are obviously people right from the start is intentional. It's about nihilism, not oh, robots are people too. How is it about... What... What... In what way does it meaningfully comment upon nihilism? Nihilism is when no robussy. True. It's all about how the androids were made by humans, but they're dead. The robots are made by aliens. They're dead, so it's just to fight each other for no reason. I don't know how well that's discussed. I don't... I don't know. It's one of the central themes. Yeah, it just I feel like it's explored in a really, really shallow way, you know? Like if if the if the crux of the theme is like search for meaning, that's like every story, you know. I, I, I feel like it doesn't grapple with that. I, I mean, if the point is that like it's a shallow, pretentious game that has some weird shit in it that people remember fondly, then I think that sort of jives with what you're saying. They were trying to emulate humanity, but were never successful. They couldn't reproduce. They all suffer the same pitfalls as humanity through war and conflict. Okay, that I think could be more interesting. But again, I don't think they explore it that well. Let me give, give me give me like one minute and let me think of a better story. Okay, just give me give me one second. Okay. One minute later. Okay, I understand now. I've concocted a better plot. Okay, here are some things that I think would have made the story a little bit more interesting. Okay, first of all, I don't think there should be any humans left any aliens left, or any androids left, because there never were any androids, okay? The idea would be that the machines that were sent by the aliens won. They won an incredibly long time ago. But in their pursuit to be more like the humans they then started to emulate, they then developed their own fragmentary, conflicted societies, some of which then had to escape to the moon to fight off their own groups, and then created the androids, realizing that they would be able to better control the androids if they identified them as an entirely distinct group. And then, essentially, you have machines sending machines to fight machines on behalf of a humanity that doesn't exist. Um, I think that would be interesting for a number of reasons, because the existence of the androids and the plight that they're in would serve to significantly highlight the extent to which humans have, um, or to which machines have emulated humanity. Um, good lord, you basically just described the plot. I'm sorry, wait, did I miss something? Are the androids created by the machines too? Or are the androids just the remnants of humans? Wait, I'm sorry, did you guys pay attention? Hold on. Am I wrong about this? Hold on. Wait. No, that's the one difference? Oh, good thing that was the difference I was saying then. Wait, are you guys joking? Yeah, the androids were made by the humans. They weren't made by the machines. The whole fucking point of what I was saying is that they were... Oh my god. 
the literal fucking point of what I just said is that if this was part of the cycle of machine recreation, that it would serve to highlight the extent to which machines have already exceeded humanity in the ways, uh, in the emulation of their behavior. All you guys heard was, uh, 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 humans gone, aliens gone, didn't you? Fuck you guys. All right, anyway, so that's step number one. You think that one thing would fix the plot? I wasn't done! Okay. They're made of the machines? That doesn't matter! That's not what I'm talking about. Androids are literally machines. I'm talking about them being a product of a fragmented group of machines who went off to the moon to flee from the other machines. That's, that's, that is different. And thematically, it's different as well. It means that the, um, the androids aren't just a remnant of some old dead war. They're a product of an ongoing war, the uh, meaning of which they've been lied about. And that meaning is important because when they find out that they've been lied to, it undercuts the fact that A, their purpose was predicated entirely on misinformation, lefty misinfo, machine misinfo, and B, it serves to further highlight the fact that machine or, uh, machines have so emulated humanity that there's not a meaningful distinction between them anymore. Imagine if the first machines that the androids came into contact with were pretty much obviously and objectively not sentient beings. So, as opposed to the way things are in the game presently, where, like, from the get-go, it's really obvious to the player that the machines are, like, living, feeling things, you know? What if the first ones you encounter are just completely, absolutely alien? Um the uh, uh uh just not recognizable as, as as sentient things at all so one small difference i'm going to kill myself what is wrong with you guys i'm in the middle of talking about this you're like oh just one thing you're just that one thing like when i'm mid-sentence what is wrong with you holy shit vosh that's not the point of the game story machines being sentient is the point that's not the point of the point that's not the point of the point that i'm making the point of the point that i'm making is that the incongruence, the cyclical nature of the conflict that they're in, the fact that they're fighting a war on the premise of uh, the, the premise on which they're fighting the war is diametrically opposite of the war's actual purpose. They're not fighting to preserve humanity. They're fighting to preserve the machines who themselves emulated humanity, okay? What if the androids, while tearing apart at the machine civilizations on the planet, which are far more developed, by the way, than, than what we see in, in, in near presently, you know, Adam and Eve shouldn't just, like, randomly appear one day. Adam and Eve should have been long-standing commanders, you know. And by the way, don't get me wrong on this, I do not appreciate the fact that the most human of the machines are the ones who look the most human, okay? I do not like that. That thematically does not fly with me, bucko, okay? If you, if the whole fucking point is that humanity is, is, a, is a matter in spirit, it kind of undercuts it that it would be like, oh, here are the most human machines. By the way, they're flesh and blood, basically. No, 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 I don't like that, okay? Uh, Pascal is a much better representation of that, but Pascal doesn't act... Uh, Pascal acts about as human as Adam and Eve, though in different ways. Pascal is more defensible. I mean, I, well, Pascal is good and, and perfect, so, you know. Pascal is a good boy, so, you know, um, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, 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 so, so all that aside, okay? That way, okay, we shouldn't be focusing on this whole, like, you know, th the fact that... Um, the fact that 2B and 9S like constantly talk about whether or not the machines are sentient, I feel like that should be settled really, really early. The answer is yes, they are, but they're nothing like us, okay? The distinction shouldn't be between not having feelings and being human. The distinction should be between being human with feelings and being non-human with feelings. Because that way the highlight is called the highlight is on the distinction between whether or not humanity is just a sum of the emotive states that are expressed by humans, or if there's something more fundamental inside of those systems, if there's something more meaningful to humanity. The answer, in my opinion, is that there isn't. But grappling th with that question from the onset would keep our protagonists from being so fucking stupid, fucking babbling about how robots have no feelings, while talking with robots that are clearly demonstrating emotive capabilities. Okay? 
And then, as the story continues, and you tunnel your way into the, you know, the, the disparate, torn-apart machine societies that have all emulated humanity in their own ways, which is shown in the game as present, okay? I feel like something that would be really, really good is the, um is uh, the androids not just understanding that the machines have emulated humanity in some respects, but understanding that the machines are, are, are essentially humans and understanding that that realization doesn't change their motive or mission at all. I, because I feel like they're grappling with the wrong question. If the real fight here, if the real difficulty here is one for purpose, uh, I think you could go so much farther by having them bite that bullet early on and then contend with the consequences of that dis of, of, the, of that dissonance, you know? Um, the, the changes like this, I think, would make a big deal. Okay, chat, where are the last collectibles? Oh, also, what was up with that bit where they ask 9S if he wants to fuck 2B? I get that that was a big drop and everything, but, like, they never followed up on that. Don't be a pussy game. If you're gonna have a main character... 2B, who is a, like, sexless... Ro maybe sexless. She's pretty emotionless for a lot of the story. If, if you have <clears throat> a character with a fat dumpy, and you have 9S, who never shows real sexual interest outside of, you know, his hacked brain talking with itself. Okay. Wait. Apparently the bleeped word wasn't fuck, but kill? Really? Is that true? The word is kill? Okay, that makes more sense. That's fine. Wait, what is the... It's deliberately ambiguous? Wait, then how are there people saying that it was one but not the other? Huh. Why bleep kill? Well, if it's meant to be deliberately ambiguous, as it could... I, I think fuck is the one that most people would assume, because kill wouldn't be censored, you know? Um, I honestly do feel like they should have done more to build up sexual tension before 9S and 2B. You know what I mean? That's a... Like, sexuality is a critical component of humanity, and 2B does have a fat dumpy. Um... <clears throat> I feel like they could have talked that up a bit more. The age difference is weird, though. Between 2B and 9S? I don't... I don't know. Aren't they just built... Like... As adults? I mean, they're machines, right? I don't I don't know how much that relates to their... He looks like a teen? Oh, yeah, well, that's like Shodabate or whatever. I mean, he, he could look potentially like an adult. It's just... I don't know. I mean, I feel like a lot of people who liked... 2B's design like the idea of a seven-foot mommy dummy with a fat ass stomping on them, so I don't... Maybe it plays into that. Chat is gross, all short people with children. I mean... <clears throat> I can't... I can't blame them for this one. 9S definitely looks younger. I mean, they're kind of in like the... Oh, kind of in like the androgynous, you know... Like, anime uh, a ambiguity zone or whatever. But like, they definitely look quite a bit younger. Then fucking 2B. Where's 2B's figurine? Ah, uh, there we go. 2B's figurine uh, after the self-destruct protocol, naturally. You know. Clearly older. I mean, at least I think so. Actually, my honest guess would be that 9S isn't meant to be Shotopate. My guess is that 9S is meant to be non-threatening. They wanted a male and a female dynamic in the two main characters, but they didn't want 9S to feel like masculine competition for 2B when when you when you play as them both. You know what I mean? I think that's another one of the reasons why almost all of the androids are girls, and then the only boys are, like, very feminine, you know? Do you recommend the game overall? Yeah, it's interesting. Nier Automata. 9S also acts like a fucking moron child. Honest to God, 2B acts pretty fucking stupid herself. That is definitely a shared criticism. What's the gameplay like? Eh, kind of crap, kind of boring. Near music slaps, right? Oh, Near's Near's music is really good. Yeah. Every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet has an original point of view, and I see.